Okay, so the intercept, the latent intercept basically means, translates into the mean level of the predicted uh, predicted in exogenous variable crime rate in our case of the four different time periods. The slope, again, the rate of change of whatever the dependent variable of interest is, crime rate. You can fix them. You can fix both the intercept and the slope and not allow them to vary, or you can allow them to vary. Uh, so you have, you have quite a bit of you have quite a bit of flexibility just with respect to that element of, of specifying the model. Okay, so this is pretty much... Uh, let's take a quick look. When you do allow variances, when you don't, when you, when you don't constrain the variance to be zero, that is, you allow the intercept, you're going to get a... You're going to get a uh, one value for the overall intercept and you're going to get one value for the overall slope but within the time periods you can implicitly allow them to vary um, the when you do allow them to vary sometimes that's called random random effects okay so here's our model from last time and we'll, we'll go through this quickly you need to uh, load up the foreign the foreign package and what the foreign package does is allows you to read a an SPSS file directly, uh, which is kind of handy. Also, you can change it into a data frame just by having uh, that second argument. It's this one, sav.sav is an SPSS file, but to data frame equals true. We'll convert it, we'll read it in, but also convert the object to a data frame. Read SPSS by itself, unlike read.csv does not automatically create a, a data frame. Any omit, this is very useful. It goes through row by row, and if there's any NA in the row, it throws the record out. Um, this is the same as case-wise deletion, sometimes called list-wise deletion. It's probably the most primitive type of uh, imputation technique. NAs are a problem because these are all numeric functions, if you try to take the mean, for example, of a column, uh, you have to tell it it can't have any it can't have any NAs. Actually, I think mean ignores the NAs, but most of the quantitative functions will choke if you have a sing single missing value anywhere within a, a vector of data that represents a variable. A vector of data is the same thing as a column in your spreadsheet. So we throw them out. And note we're making the interaction term here outside of the data set. Because as I mentioned, Levon doesn't allow you to do it on the fly, which is actually much more flexible and easier. Okay, so the data set one, we have two data sets, one and two. For the basic model, we just used one. So let's what we're doing here is we're running the growth model directly off of the covariance matrix. So for input, what we need is the covariance matrix. We need the means of each uh, time period and we need the number of observations. That's all it needs to know. Okay, so here's our here's our covariance matrix with all the names properly put in place. And they're, they're time. It's time-based. So it's always symmetrical, of course. And then here's the mean for each, um, each time period. And then we look at... Um, what do we do? We go directly into the model. This is actually the means. Uh, this is the means of the of the mean of the mean level. We'll talk about that more in a second. Okay, so we load up the the Levon package, and the example that we use ran through four, actually five models, and we'll do them quickly. That go from the most restrictive model, just an intercept that can't change, and fixed residuals to the uh, least restrictive model, which actually is the fifth one, where you have an intercept, a latent intercept, and a latent slope, and they can both vary, and the residuals are not constrained to be equal. Okay, so it's, it takes a little while to get used to it, but um, to specify to specify a variance 
for either a latent intercept or a latent, latent slope, you simply leave this term out. So including this term, what we're doing here is we're specifying, here's our, this is our latent intercept, of course, and we're using the, the coefficients 1 on every time period. And what that suggests is that whatever this value of this latent intercept is, it has an equal influence on the mean of the predicted crime rate data at each time period. So the means, uh, it will have an equal influence. The means are not allowed to vary by time period. The, the overall intercept will always be fixed. It'll always be one, but you can either allow it to vary at each time period or not. Same with the slope. But the way you keep it from varying is you specify an intercept term that is zero. That's what this is. The double tildes uh, indicates variance since we have the same variable in the same time. We're pre-naming it or pre-valuing it at zero. And then we're fixing all of the residual variances of the intercept by of the latent intercept by uh, just giving them the same custom label. So it's very consistent with how you do other things with the syntax of Levon overall, which is nice. Which is probably one of the reasons why it's so popular. You learn the basic building blocks, and then you can apply them to more uh, complex uh, complex specifications, complex scenarios in your model. And so note here in the fitting function, we're using growth, which is similar to SAM, but in the, in the fitting function, because we're running it off the covariance matrix, you have to tell it what the covariance matrix is, what the mean is, and it doesn't know how many observations you have to tell it. So 952. What we did, we took the original data and we changed it into a covariance matrix. So we're not inputting the direct data. So we do that and uh, look at the summary. This is the most constrained model. And so uh, we're not going to worry about the overall fit. It's bad in all of them, but it does improve as you let, allow the model to become uh, more flexible, less constrained. So here's the overall mean of the latent intercept. And this is the, this is the same number that you saw for uh, in, in, the, uh, in the spreadsheet. Here is the this is the amount of unexplained variance that the latent intercept uh, is responsible for in each time period. And we fixed it to be the same. So what this implies is that if 63.7% of the variance is unexplained, then uh, the intercept must be explaining 1 minus this amount, or 36.3% of the variance in the crime rates at each time period, subject to the constraints we, we put in the model. OK, so that's pretty much it. We, we didn't allow anything to vary. Um, so here is the, the second crime model. The only difference between this one and the first one is now we're allowing the intercept to, be, to vary before it was fixed. Now we're allowing it to vary. By not specifying the inter by not specifying any sort of constraint on the variance, so it will automatically estimate the variance. Overall, it'll be a fixed level, as I said before. But now you, the model, the specification of the model will account for um, ch slight changes in the actual estimated mean at each time period, because we didn't we we are we are allowing some variance. Okay, so we load up that one. And uh, we, we fit it. Fitting function doesn't change ever in this example. And take a look. OK, now we see, remember before, the leftover variance was 63%. Now we see that the leftover variance has fallen dramatically. Uh, and furthermore, we note that uh, by allowing the latent intercept to to vary, even though the the overall uh, value is the same, by allowing it to vary, now we see that it indicates that uh, it explains. 
The variability explains 48% of the overall crime rate variability. So, and there's 15.7% uh, variance left over in each time period of overall crime rate based on the intercept, on the latent intercept. So, you can conclude that, you can conclude a couple of things. You can conclude that uh, if there's, assuming we only have room, freedom, uh, we, we only have degrees of freedom to account for variance in the intercept and for variance in the uh, each line item, which are the different communities, uh, this is from the intercept and this is from the communities. So we know that what's left over, 15.7%, is due to, of the, of the uh, difference between predicted and actual, is due to crime variability uh, among the communities, because there are several of them. Okay, and so then overall, the variance, the intercept accounted for 48%, divided by 48% plus 15. So overall, the intercept is explaining, the latent intercept is explaining 75.4% of the total variability in the uh, crime rate observed at each of the four time periods uh, by itself. And if you went up and looked at the Chi-squared numbers are still unacceptable, but they constantly improve. This is a better fitted model. You're allowing explanation of the leftover variance. You're allowing explanation of the part that's not being predicted by more parameters as you, will, as you allow them to be estimated.